All right. I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. It is 6.32 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting on December 18th. I have a motion we approve the minutes of December 18th. Second. You have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All right. Our first order of business is going to be to approve the common VIC license. Um, Jeff, we have one more of those. Is that correct? Um, yeah, it was actually just a, a change in the license, so you just have to re-sign it for the okay. sake of the market. Okay, great. Um, all those, in, or at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve the common VIC license. I have a motion we approve the common VIC license. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Up next is our budget presentation from the Sunderland Public Library. Justine. Do you want, should we wait? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, coming. Okay. So okay. Right so, Sorry. Yeah. No problem. So we're going to jump into old business, and we will come back to that um, in a minute. Uh, first up on old business is 23 Plum Tree. Jeff, do you have an update on how things are going with that? Yeah. So I guess um, I am still looking into the – I'm forgetting the name of the federal low – um, interest loan slash grant program um, reaching out there's a regional director for Connecticut Massachusetts and Rhode Island so I'm reaching out to them to understand the process a little bit better um, but I guess I, I wanted to ask if the select board had thoughts um, I think the last meeting we talked about sort of hosting an open house where resident like a, a weekend you think like a two-hour time frame is that um, avoid Martin Luther King weekend I guess I just want if any input before I schedule it um. yeah I mean how are we going to get the word out there that this is even going to happen for town residents yeah I mean we could certainly put a, a slide up on FCAT we could put something out on the website and email um, yeah we could reach out to the the recorder. Can we do it the blast call thing? Um, we could probably do a, a reverse nine. Yeah, the code red. Yeah. Alert. Um, yeah, I'm just. I mean, I don't even know how informed the public is that this is. You know what I mean? Yes, we talk about it here, but does the majority of the town residents know that that's even something that we're considering? Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> right, right. I don't know. Well, right. um, first time I could give a quick. <laughs> yeah, quick update, but, but I mean, is it is it something that we come up with a plan to put something out first that we're considering it, or you know, we it's something we want to look into. These are possible uses for the building. You know, with the senior center kind of spend a week just you know even if it's throwing up flyers and stuff at you know any place we can think of and then schedule it the next week okay makes sense I, I don't know I don't know I just want to make sure as many people as possible know I've heard about it before we do schedule it. We want to pick yeah. the week, though, so that when we do start letting people know, we have a date to give them that it's going to happen on yeah. February 3rd or something like that, so we have a, a firm date. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend being a long weekend might not be a great one to do, but people might be planning to travel, so maybe we Go avoid skiing. that one. Um, yeah. What's the weekend after that look like in terms of... Um, MMA, I right? think the weekend, yeah, is MMA. Um, yeah, it's following. How about two weeks after that? Yeah, yeah so like the 27th, 28th. Yeah, like something. a Saturday two hour window would be great. If the, yeah. If the real so if you, can aim, yeah, if you can aim for that, that'd be great. Um, and then we will worry about getting the word out to people um, ahead of time. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. All righty. You guys ready? Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Not a problem at all. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming. Um, so the um, 
we provided two budgets as requested, one for level services and one for expanded services. Um, the level services budget um, just has increases for library expense. Um, that's kind of matching. Um, last year, you guys gave us a, a little bit of a bump in that, which we really appreciate to you know reflect the rising cost of um, materials, which continues to rise. But um, the main thing is that in order to meet state requirements, we um, rely really heavily on our um, private donors, um, many of which are San Milan residents. So kind of paying for the library twice. Um, the state certification is really essential in order for us to um, be able to do what we do, um, which is be part of um, the network CWMRs, which um, provides us with access to millions of items that our patrons have can borrow. Um, so we're asking for an increase in that so that we do not have to rely so much on our donors. Um, so that the town can uh, provide a, you know, a, a larger proportion of that. Um, and so even though it is an increase in cost, it is still a level of service because it allows us to maintain our certification and it allows us to um, continue to, to do what we do, but with just less burden on, on private donors. It's just the town taking on a little bit more responsibility for um, the materials that we provide access to. Um, I did not request any um, increase in the building expense budget. Um, I feel like the building's in good shape, especially thanks to some capital projects that we've been working on, so, um, and the maintenance of it is, is fine. Um, and then for the salaries, um, I requested an 8% um, cost of living increase. That is um, <coughs> just a big, you know, obviously we will support whatever the personnel committee decides to put forward, um, but we feel that um, just because inflation has been so high for the past several years and employees have been getting to 2.5%, we're very far behind. <laughs> um, so we're just asking for, a, you know, suggesting a little bit of a bump in that to kind of get us where we should be. Um, and that's based on um, the 8% uh, federal um, cost of living that um, employees were provided last year. Um, and then for expanded services, um, the main difference is that um, an expanded service that our patrons have requested and that we would like to offer is to um, offer Thursday hours. Um, so that would be opening up the library for um, one extra day um, and then also providing um, six extra hours, staff hours, um, was for the, um, the, you know, the salary increase there. Um, and so we are thinking, um, you know, we did a long range plan this past year um, and just based on um, survey results, patrons are asking for more library hours and uh, in particular Thursday hours and um, having worked there, it's extremely common um, when we're closed, people are pulling <laughs> on the door trying to get in. Um, I'm also seeing a big request for a lot of morning hours, um, especially since the pandemic, we're seeing a lot of people have more flexible hours and schedules and are, we're much busier in the mornings as opposed to the evenings we used to be when people traditionally got off of work, they would come in. Um, and so I think offering some additional morning hours would be really, really beneficial, um, especially for the folks over at Sanderson Place who like to come over um, usually earlier in the day when they're able to. Um, so offering those Thursday hours I think would be really beneficial to them in particular, but to everyone. Um, especially I see a lot of parents too with young kids coming in um, during the day. So just having an extra morning would be wonderful, especially on a weekday. Because um, right now it's just Monday and Friday mornings that were open and Saturday mornings. Um, and then I also thought it would be a wonderful opportunity um, to reinstate our sensory friendly hours. Um, so those are hours that we specifically make the environment in the library a little more accommodating and comfortable for people on the autism spectrum or who have other sensory processing disorders. Um, all that really means is keeping the lights a little bit lower not having any special programs that are gonna be busy and active, and just um, making sure our staff are, are aware um, and our patrons are aware that it's just kind of a quieter, calmer time to visit the library. 
like adult um, swim in the pool, but for exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so um, you know, it's anyone is welcome to come during those times. But I, I think especially if we're adding a new day, people don't necessarily know. It might take a little while for them to, to get used to the fact that we're open that time. So having it already, like just starting fresh with a special sensory friendly hours, like that's the day that is sensory friendly day. It, I think it would really make um, people more aware, more comfortable with it. And I just think it would be really beneficial to everyone to add morning hours, sensory friendly hours and an extra day, weekday. And obviously, you don't already have things planned for that day, so you're not trying to move other things around in order to create the sensory hours. Exactly. Things, so. Yeah. And um, myself and one other employee already work on Thursdays, um, so it's really only the six extra staff hours that we would need um, to have two two staff members um, working during that day. Okay. In terms of operating expenses, is there going to be some sort of nominal increase in that also to have it open another day? Yeah. So um, in terms of the building expense, um, it's a really tiny increase, and that's just adding an extra day of cleaning um, for the cleaning service to come in. Yep. Um, it's, I was surprised it was so low, but honestly, the way our, our building fund is right now, um, I don't anticipate us needing to buy like extra toilet paper. You know, it just seems like we have enough money in there that we don't need to save extra, or you know, there wouldn't be extra. Um, the phone bill wouldn't go up. The internet wouldn't yeah. go up. I mean, it's just kind of making sure that the building is, is cleaned on that day would be okay. great. Great. Any, Any questions? questions? No, I use the CW Mars. I like it. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, thank you very much for providing both the budgets. We really appreciate it. Um, Jeff, do you have Catherine, can I yes. just ask about the um, substitute circulation assistance hours? Yes. So basically the the increase from 185 to 230 is 230 is the max number of hours that full-time or not full-time, regular and benefit yeah. employees could take off. And so you just want to make sure that you have enough to fill, backfill if all those hours were taken. Exactly. Yeah. It's very unlikely that we would, and we almost always give the money back to the town in terms of salaries, but um, just in case, you know, something awful happens, like especially this past year, we, me having a baby had to take a lot of time of my sick time um, for that vacations as well. And then we have another employee who, um, you know, had a death in her family and she is taking a lot of time off. I mean, so it just, every once in a while it does happen where we, you know, need to use our, our benefits. <laughs> um, and so being able to staff the library and have patrons not um, notice, you know, an interruption of service. No, I'd much rather prepare for the maximum number of hours and have you give money back than have us have a special town meeting in the middle of the summer or yes. <laughs> otherwise the library be out of money. Exactly. Um, and I just want to mention for those at home that don't have a sheet in front of them, it's looking like the ask is about $6,500, which would allow the town to open the library on a, another day. So that that's that would be the additional cost. Okay. Yeah, in terms of like an expanded service, I feel like it's um, it would be a huge benefit and not too much of a cost, really, um, to the town. Great. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Justine Rosewine. I'm the chair of the library trustees. And um, we want to just say we support this budget wholeheartedly. Um, and Catherine always is so thoughtful and puts so much time and effort into this, so we appreciate that. But I'm happy to answer any questions. I'd also like to point out, um, you know, the 8% um, is the inflation, but also the federal government has given their employees a, I think it's 5.2% increase for 2024. So just food for thought. Great, thank you. Um, also, just want to take the opportunity to say I love everything you guys do there. Thank you so much for having one of the best libraries in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> you know, every time you guys come to talk to us, I, I find out about something new that you guys do there that I really appreciate. Um, the, the quiet hours sound or the sensory hour sounds wonderful. I really yeah, thank you, Jeff. You know. And just to worry about that, we were uh, right before the pandemic started. We had a, a grant, um, a library services and technology act grant, to improve our services to people on the autism spectrum, and that was something that people requested. Something we started doing, and then the pandemic happened, and every, you know everything fell fell by the wayside. So it would be really 
um, special, I think, um, to be able to continue that or restart that um, because I, I do think that people would appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate the presentation. Um, and while I'm on TV, just very quickly, the library is going to be closing um, temporarily for a capital project while we get our carpets replaced. So we are going to be closed from Wednesday, January 10th until uh, through Tuesday, January 23rd. Um, so tomorrow, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. is our last open hour. So come in, stock up. <laughs> we look forward to seeing everyone with fresh new carpets on the 24th. Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you, you guys. I appreciate Thanks. it. Have a great one. All right, so that should be all of our new business. Um, we have old business, select board updates. Dan, do you have anything for us? Um, yeah, I can give you a little bit of an update on the uh, mass trails. Um, mass dot advised that we uh, apply for a mass trails grant. They're due in February. Um, so it's pretty much just for a feasibility study. Um, there is a grant, but you can actually use labor to offset the grant, so we could actually put in time to, to make up the match. Um, I haven't got detail. I'll give you more details as I get it, but I'm trying to work up a number for what we'd be asking for. Um, the, the one thing I would, I, we'd like to get some letters of support, um, and so that'd be something I definitely want to get, get moving down. Maybe I don't know if it's the best way for me to want to draft something up just to send out to people. Um, I don't know how that process all works, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so the support for that would be good. And I've heard good support from all, all the towns seem to have been supported. I mean, it's the, the, the paths are from UMass to Waitley, so it would be you know, us, us, Deerfield, Waitley. And then the, I think the uh, state reps would, would weigh in as well, could get, send us a letter as well. So it would be for a feasibility study, just to look at it, see what the, you know, where any problem spots are. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of the guidance that MassDOT gave us, so well, that's a good way to go. Yeah, totally. Thank you for, thank you for that. Sorry, um, Dan, letters of support, you're thinking the towns, UMass, Electric. Yeah, we could. Yeah, I'm trying to get some. Um, I'm actually trying to get some definition because the UMass section already shows up on their priorities map. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we need to we need to request for that and include that section, or if we're just looking for the 116 section. So I'm trying to get clarification on that. But I got to do it quick. I'm gonna like, give us an answer quick as if we need to reach out. I, I don't think you must have any problem doing it, but it just takes time sometimes to yeah. to get the letters done. Yep. Okay. So that's my update. Great. Thank you. So um, the South County EMS, the first choice candidate, Joshua Sparks, did accept the job finally. Awesome. Um, and he has a start date of uh, February 12th. So we now will have a new director slash, what's going on? Um, maybe I misunderstood. Because they're supposed to do their budget presentation on the 5th. And so Tim was asking if they could push it back, but we don't really have a date unless you wanted to meet um, either school vacation Monday or the following Monday when I'm not here. Um, I don't know. To just Tim mentioned it because I think they're scheduled the 5th. He starts the 12th. So Tim was saying, hey, can we push it back at some point so that he can participate in the budget too? Okay. Um, we're pretty packed, <laughs> so yeah. unless we wanted to add them to the night we're doing Franklin Tech, or one of those two weeks that we is there someone else that can move around and switch? We've already moved them, okay, <laughs> because Tim asked for it, so yeah. it's um, not further back because of because of where. Or I guess the other thing is in March we're planning on going to the school committee meetings, so we're not having our typical Monday meetings. We could. If you wanted to do a early March and have two select board meetings in a week, you could do that too. Right. Um, we'll think about a little bit with the calendars and we'll yeah. be in touch via email about Yeah, I think that they would. I told them to plan on coming on the 5th, and um, you know, if adjustments had to be made afterwards to the budget, then that could happen. But I'm sure they'd yeah. be happy with the postponement. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's all I have. Yes. Alrighty. Um, the only thing I have is I just wanted to um, send my my personal condolences and the condolences of the town to Melvin Lee Williams Jr.'s family, um, the Sutherland resident who was um, hit and killed on 116 this past weekend. Um, we're very sorry for your loss. It's a real tragedy for the town and for for everybody. So, I wanted to say that. Jeff, any updates from you? 
Um, yep, uh, a couple things. One, just wanted to circle back on the pickleball fences height. Um, so the proposed height was six feet. We talked about eight feet. You asked me to do some research. They go up to 10 feet. 10 feet isn't an unreasonable height. So I think that if eight feet is the preferred height, just let me know and I'll let the architect know and he'll. Yeah, but cost wise, was there a. It, he said it was minimal. I think on, on the cost of the project, it would be maybe, maybe a couple percent, but not like more than two or three, you know, a couple thousand dollars at most. Yeah, okay. I just think six seems so low. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could have been honest, I never played pickleball. I've never watched it. No, I, 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 I haven't either. I'm just thinking a yeah, fence yeah, height yeah. of, six you, know, is, you know. I, I agree with the eight foot fence height being good. Okay, you know, I mean, and I'm thinking like, you know, when you go over to Mill River, places like that that have, and again, I realize tennis courts and pickleball courts are different. Yeah. But those yeah. fences are. Yeah. And you don't want people knocking the ball out of the court every other shot yeah. at six feet and then you go oh, I really wish we, we had those eight feet yeah. <laughs> it's going to cost a lot more to up in the eight feet after the fact yeah. than it is yeah. when yeah. they're still pouring the concrete in the last yeah I mean if it's a small difference go ahead and do it. Yep. bigger is better I think yeah great okay. I agree with that and then the last thing I wanted to mention is um, January 30th um, the village center uh, committee is going to be having, I guess I'll call it a charrette, um, a visioning exercise with the consultants at the library. Um, there's going to be sort of mini presentations at 3.30 and 6.30 to try and get people, but you can come by any time. The real draws, there are going to be a bunch of boards. There's going to be maps of the town and Consultants want to hear from, from the public what they want to see in town, what types of development, what the intersection should look like, um, all sorts of activities, what they like to do in town, what their biggest concerns are, that kind of stuff. What did you say that was? Uh, January 30th, 30th and then 30th. February 1st, I believe, is the snow date in okay. case it snows. So that's a Tuesday and a Thursday, right? Yeah. Okay. That's right. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to. So the three thirty and the six thirty presentation are the same presentation. Same presentation, okay. and it's just going to be a short spiel explanation of the boards, basically. Yeah. Um, so if you don't make it to one, you're not really going to be losing out on a whole lot. And what times it go till? From uh, I think they're going to be there till about seven thirty or eight, um, and then they're planning on leaving the boards in the library so that. People can continue to think about it and come and add mm -hmm. comments um, afterwards as well. Wonderful. That's all I have. And the next meeting is not January 8th, it'll be the 16th. Yes. <laughs> Our next meeting will be uh, Monday, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday um, January 16th. Uh, the day after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. <coughs> all right. Um, at this time, um, we are going to go into executive session. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, uh, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Police Union Sunderland Police Association v. Town of Sunderland, MUP 229503. Uh, to do that, we need a roll call vote. Right, and we'll just be coming back to public session yeah. to adjourn. Yes, we will be returning to public session after the executive session just to adjourn. Uh, at the time, we would need a roll call vote on this. Do we need a motion first? A motion Sorry. we yes, enter yes. into executive session? Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to enter into executive session. Roll call vote, all in favor? Aye, Crystal Drake, John Aye, Dan Murphy. Aye, Nathaniel Waring. And it is 6.56. Thank you very much.